does NASCAR need a cost cap? Back during NASCAR Championship Weekend, NASCAR President Steve Phelps floated the idea of a cost cap. The idea is to rein in spending on NASCAR Cup Series teams because right now, majority of them, if not all of them, are operating at a loss. Something that would make Dave Ramsey very upset, smash his table, and give you that glaringly disappointed dad stare because you went out and bought breakfast for yourself or something like that. Formula One, of course, already has a cost cap. It was introduced, they've had a bit of drama with it, Red Bull went over because they thought that Red Bull energy drinks wouldn't count towards the cost of catering. Turns out they do, because if they didn't, that means you would have like an Aston Martin ham sandwich out there all the time, and people would be very upset about it. So they got hit with a penalty, they served that penalty, they still created the most dominant car we've seen in Formula One ever, and it didn't really seem like it affected them that much. But the Formula One cost cap right now is set at $135 million, likely to maybe come down to $130 million, but that's far more than NASCAR teams could ever get. They'd be walking around like Grandpa Joe and Willy Wonka if they got $130 million for their budget, they wouldn't know what to do with themselves. And it'd be kind of pointless because at this point, there's not a ton of development NASCAR teams can do, not in the same way Formula One teams can do. But for NASCAR to implement a cost cap, it's going to require a lot of work and something that I'm sure that they've thought about because I think the NASCAR leadership right now does put a lot more thought into things versus the Brian France era of just a radically making decisions and being like, we're doing this now. And, ah, it's like, calm down, calm down. But the current generation of leadership definitely puts some more thought into it. And if they're floating the idea of a cost cap, they've thought about it. But it's going to be a lot more work for NASCAR than it is for Formula One. Or at least work in terms of making it happen, not so much the auditing process, because that's going to be a ton of work in itself. So in Formula One, the cost cap doesn't include driver salary, the top three salaries for team personnel, Tra uh, travel to the race for the team or engine development. It does include, however, the rest of the team's salaries, development of the car, crashes, transportation of the equipment to the race, garage equipment, etc. So for NASCAR, you're going to have to work that basically maybe the same way, if not a little bit differently, but in Formula One, it's easy, right? You have $135 million, every team only has two cars basically split it down the middle if we want to make things simple here and each side gets half and half. On NASCAR's side, things get a little bit more difficult. Because of the 36 charter teams, you have teams like JTG Doherty Racing that only have one car. Then you have teams like RFK and 2311 that have two cars. And then you have teams like Penske and Hendrick and Gibbs and SHR that all have four cars. So how do you make it even for all of them? And I know the simple solution that people are gonna be is like, well, just give them the same amount. So like say, we'll just set it at $20 million per car. Well, if everybody only has $20 million per car, then what's the big problem then? True, I get that. Makes total sense on paper, but this is, we're not being realistic here. So say you're Hendrick Motorsports, each team has $20 million to work with. You're looking at trying to do something with CFD in a certain area, development on a certain part, even though it's hard to develop things with the next gen car anyways. But just say you're looking at one thing there. What's to stop them from having another team within their stable look at this, another team look at that, and the other team look at that, and then they all four come together, share notes, and they've now done four times the amount of research and development and testing that JTG Doherty Racing can do, or RFK, who can only do half of what these other teams are doing. And now NASCAR could set up sort of an auditing system, right? Where they could go through and look at what information and what you're working on and then try to stop that information from being shared between teams. It would never happen. It kind of would defeat the purpose of a four car team at that point. And I don't think there's a lot of conspiracy theorists out there that think NASCAR only wants teams to be basically two car teams. Go down to the Australian supercars model, even though some of them have three or four cars at time, or basically the Formula One model where everybody just has two cars and we go out there and race that way. They're absolutely not going to move to that model. But in terms of a cost cap, it does make things more difficult when you have a four car team or a one car team. And what's involved in all of that? Right, well, how's NASCAR going to set this up? Because in Formula One, we'll just take what's included in the cost cap are crashes. You have a big crash, that hits the cost cap. Carlos Sainz, Ferrari said that that crash that he had at Las Vegas, where he hit the manhole cover, which, or water valve cover, my apologies, blue collar guys, don't come at me in the comments like you did on TikTok. I understand, it's the water valve cover. But when you have that happen, it costs $2 million worth of damage, that comes out of the cost cap, that comes out of your budget which means that they can't do now $2 million worth of development or $2 million worth of part creation for that car because they've had to spend that money repairing and replacing that car essentially. So with NASCAR teams, you have six super speedway races a year, two at Daytona, two at Talladega, two at Atlanta. 
Say you get swept up in all six of those races. You get caught up in a crash. You have to replace the diffuser, body panels, whatever else on the car. That's going to be a really big hit to your budget and to the cost cap. So how does NASCAR manage that, right? It's going to make things very difficult. And right now, I don't know if they necessarily have the auditing system in place to keep track of all that. We've heard Ferrari in recent weeks or this past season say that they essentially have an FIA auditor living in the factory with them in Marinello, figuratively, of course, but they say that they're on the phone constantly with the FIA asking what does this do to what our budget is and how does this affect the cost cap, whether that's like turning on a machine, developing a part, replacing a part over here, having this person work extra hours, like there's so much that goes into it. And I just don't think NASCAR necessarily has the infrastructure at the moment for somebody to keep track of 36 different charter teams and all the little things that they're doing throughout the time. Take Hendrick Motorsports, for example. During the weekend, they have an entire war room of personnel sitting there keeping track of everything and every single data point on the car. They have people down in the simulator testing out different setups for the car as well. They'll have them do it overnight. Formula One does this too, of course but you don't have that opportunity for JTG Darty. I mean, Michael McDowell said earlier this year that the only time he got on the Ford simulator since Front Row Motorsports, of course, can't afford their own sim, was on the Thursday before the race at the Indianapolis Road Course, the race that he went out and won. But he said it was so late in the week that the car was already gone, and even if they did discover something, that like, they couldn't put it on for the initial setup of the car. That's a real problem because you have guys like Hendrick who can constantly be running these simulations. And I think that's sort of where we come into this like whole, uh, how, do we, how do we judge this thing? And then who's going to keep track of everything for it? Certainly not Austin Dillon for RCR, because at one point he thought you were running 500 laps at Daytona, and that was just never going to happen. Daytona 500, 500 laps, right? Maybe don't put him in charge of things if he does move to a management role in the future, but teams would have to institute an auditor or a whole team that keeps track of every single expense that these teams have. And that's an added cost, right? And that's kind of a bit of an oxymoron considering that the whole idea of the cost cap is to reduce cost. And now we're going to have to add in personnel to make up or not make up necessarily, but we keep track of all of the expenses that they're having. So there's a lot of thought that has to go into this. And I'm sure NASCAR and Steve Phelps and Steve O'Donnell are certainly paying attention to it. They do seem to be putting more thoughts into things like I mentioned before. Granted, Give us more horsepower. I don't think enough thoughts being put into that. Just, just do it for all of us, please. Even if it's like 800, just appease us for a moment. That's my plea to, to NASCAR at this point. But I think the idea of a cost cap is good. I know some fans are absolutely going to hate it. And I can understand why, right? Because racing's inherently expensive. And whether it's $20 million or $15 million or $25 million a year, it's expensive to go racing. And now NASCAR has a decision to make when teams, when they're negotiating the new charter deal, how much money they're going to get out of this new media revenue, which is $1.2 billion a year starting in 2025, up from the $820 million that they currently receive. Teams want a bigger slice of that pie, that TV revenue pie. And if they do get it, it certainly makes setting a cost cap a bit easier, right? Say, hypothetically, teams get $12 million a year and NASCAR sets the cost cap at $16 million then teams only have to go out and find $4 million worth of sponsorship, which is not easily attainable necessarily, but it is moderately attainable, something that they can definitely go out there and do with, you know, somewhat ease uh, for the most part. If teams don't get a bigger slice of that pie, instituting a cost cap is going to be a lot more difficult uh, just because you're not guaranteed that money for your budget necessarily, not the same way that like if NASCAR guarantees every charter team X amount of dollars. So I think there's a lot that goes into it as a really big undertaking if they do take this approach. And I think that they should consider it. I just don't necessarily know if it's the right thing to do at the moment. I still think that there's some things that they need to focus on beforehand, but you can't really argue that the parity isn't as good. Sure, top teams continue to win the championship. I get that. But over the 72 races we've had with the Gen 7 car, there's been 25 different winners, 24 of those being chartered, drivers, drivers that are racing for the championship, that's pretty good parity. When 24 out of your 36 drivers are winning champion, or not championships rather, but races, that's phenomenal, right? Formula One can only dream of having something like that. Three guys won races in 2023 there. In NASCAR, the number's exponentially higher. Same with like IndyCar, you guys, good parity. But I think that the cost cap could help, 
but it can also hurt at the same time, and I think it has to be done correctly. I like the idea that NASCAR is at least considering it, floating the idea, and not just immediately rushing to be like, guess what, in 2024, you have $17 million you can spend. And it's like, well, that doesn't really work here. I also don't love the idea of personnel salaries being capped, because uh, I, you know, I believe in a free market where if you can get paid more money, then go ahead and do it. And right now the RTA sort of sets parameters in a sense of how much like they're willing to pay on a scale. And I don't love the idea of like having a hard cap on what, what one personnel member can make versus another. So those are all things that need to be worked out. But overall, the idea of a cost cap is not necessarily a bad thing. I know people might freak out, but let me know in the comments. Do you like the idea? Do you hate the idea? And why? Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at BreakHard, Instagram and Twitter at BreakHardBlog.